I just feel like I've got to give y'all what the Lord gave me today. And it may be a little different than the theme of the service here. And I don't know that I've ever preached this before. You don't hear it preached much anymore. But I feel like I need to preach this today. I'm going to pass to the church today. Every now and then, I like the role of an evangelist. I've, I've did that. But I also have the hat of a pastor, and I've got to be a pastor today. And we're going to do that with the help of the Lord today. And I don't have any axe to grind. I'm not mad at anybody. I don't have anybody to reprove. We're just going to let the word of the Lord speak to us today. And that's going to be coming today from us to us from the book of 2 Samuel in your Bibles this morning. 2 Samuel chapter 6, please. We're going to begin reading at the first verse of 2 Samuel chapter 6. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1 in your Bibles. Thank you for standing for the word of the Lord. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah. Bring up from thence the ark of God. Everybody say the ark of God. Whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart. Everybody say new cart. And brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even in harps and psalteries and timbrels and on cornets and cymbals. And when they came to, the, to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, which was forbidden, for the oxen shook it. Anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. And there he died by the ark of God. I'm going to preach this morning with the help of the Lord on the subject of new carts new cards. Amen. Put your Bible down beside you and give the Lord one more hand clap of appreciation and praise today. Amen, amen, amen. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen. God bless you today. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. The Ark of the Lord or the Ark of the Covenant was the most holy thing. Uh, thank you for playing, Brother Scott. We appreciate that. It was the most holy thing that Israel had ever had in its possession. It was designed by God and built by uh, the artificers and the craftsmen of Israel to put in the holy place, the most holy place, as a symbol or as a reference to the holy presence of God. It was, it was sanctified, it was set apart, it was, it was a holy the most holy piece of furniture of, of, of all of Israel. And it was designed very specifically and built very specifically with gold and um, different, different construction materials. It was an immaculate piece of furniture with angels on top and their wings touched each other on the top of the, of the Ark of the Covenant. And it was, it was really quite a sight. And the history of it is that when, when the Ark of, of the Covenant was with Israel and was, was treated properly, they, they were a people of great victory. And, and they learned to respect and honor that. It was, there were uh, laws concerning it. You weren't supposed to touch it. You weren't supposed to put your hands on it. There were some very specific ways of carrying that ark. And if our brothers back there have that little picture for us, I'd like for us to pull that up now if we could. I have a picture of the proper way that this ark was to be carried. You're seeing here kind of a, a little crude picture, if you will, but I thought it pictured it pretty good. These are priests that are carrying the ark upon their shoulders with poles. And there's little rings that were built onto the sides of the ark to, that they put those poles through. And the ark would rest upon the shoulders of the priests. And that was how they were supposed to carry it. At no time were, were the priests supposed to touch it because that was forbidden by God's law. 
And so uh, it was designed to be carried on the shoulders of the priests. Thank you for that picture, brother. We appreciate that. And King David had, had, had desired to have the Ark of the Covenant come back to Jerusalem. And we read where they were, they were bringing it back and there was great fanfare and there was great worship and there was great praise. But they had, they had brought it back improperly. They were bringing it back improperly. They, were, they put it on a new cart. Whoever's idea that was, it was not the best of ideas. They, they did something different. They did something new. They did something they were not supposed to have done. And when it got to a certain place, it, it, they reached a kind of a rough place in the road and the oxen shook it. And Uzzah, being well-intentioned and well-meaning, put his hand out, not thinking, though, like he should have been thinking. And he put his hand out to the ark to steady the ark, and he, 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 he broke the Lord's law. And God judged him right there, and he died that day beside the most holy, set-apart piece of furniture ever in Israel's history. He died standing right by the presence of the Lord. He did, it, he did it unintentional. He, he, he just didn't have his mind where it should have been. He just did. Maybe he had forgot the, the sacredness of it. Whatever the reason was, he put his hand out. And it, it, the Bible calls it an error. And the Lord smote him there for his error. And as somebody may, and this is 3,000 years ago, somebody may say, what in the world does that have to do with us 3,000 years later? Well, that's what I'm going to preach about today. Because we're living in a day now where there are a bunch of new carts. A whole bunch of new carts. Amen. And a new cart is something that we would use or employ that's something different than God's will or God's purpose or God's plan or God's way. It would be man's way and not God's way. Can I have an amen? amen. And we have a whole bunch of carts that's been put into place today because man wants it his way and not God's way. Amen. We want shortcuts. We want easy routes. We want the, the path of least resistance. We don't want to do it God's way. It, many, many are like that because of the sacrifice involved, because of the keeping of the laws involved, because of everything that's involved. We just like to do things our way. But let me tell you something about it. That is a dangerous place to be in. It's either a man's way or, or it's not... For not God's way for a lot of people, but I'm, I'm just going to correct that thinking today. Our thinking is it's God's way or it's no way. It's, it's the Holy Ghost way or it's no way. It's the holy way or it's no way. We don't need man's ideas. Man's got some great ideas. But when it comes to the presence of the Lord and holy things of God, we don't need man's ideas. We need God's way and God's word and God's will and God's spirit. We don't need man's ideas and thoughts and opinions. We need to get back to the book and trust the Lord because God always knows best. Somebody shout amen. Amen. We have a world today. Especially in church, we'll do a bunch of new carts that's been raised up. Here are some examples of that. We don't need a pastor anymore. We don't need a church over covering anymore. You know what that is? That's a new cart. We don't need the prop, we don't need the prophetic anymore. We don't need the laws of God anymore. You know what that is? That is a new cart. We don't need brothers or sisters anymore. We don't need ministry anymore. We don't need each. You know what that is? That is a new cart. And that kind of thinking will get us in big trouble. We had better get back to the old ways and the old paths and trust God's word and trust God's laws because new carts. You listen to me. New carts will get you killed. Now, I told y'all it was going to be a little hard here. But new carts will get you killed. It's God's way or the highway. We're going to be a church that the Holy Ghost leads us. We're going to be a church the Spirit of God guides us. We're going to be a church where worship is still in style. And Pentecost is still in style. And hand clapping is still in style. And holiness is still in style. And living for God is still in We don't care what the world says. That's all new carts. We are not a new cart church today. Come on, somebody. Now, I may get some of y'all upset, but you, it's going to be tight, but it's also going to be right. 
It, we don't need accountability. We don't need a spiritual covering. You know what that is? That is a new cart. We could be content to stay at home and have pajama church on the live stream. That's a new cart. That's a new cart. You know, I'm not being ugly at all with it, but it's a new cart. That's not the Lord's way. And I got some people in here today that can testify to that. That is not the Lord's way. If you can get to church, you better get your hide up and get in church. If you, can, if you got a way to get here and you're healthy enough to get here, you better be getting to the house of God. Any other thing is a new cart, y'all. And there's going to be trouble with that somewhere. Do you need a church? Do you need a pastor? Do you need the Bible? Do you need preaching? Do you need brothers and sisters? Do you need the laws that you've got to have? The Lord's way to make it, everybody. I'll never get my head around it. I will never, ever, ever. Be able to conceive in my head how weak could be the church, but yet not want to come to church. Amen. Somebody help me with that. Amen. How can we appreciate the old ways if we don't want to obey the old ways? How can we be the old time apostolic Pentecostal church and want to put in new carts into the mix with all that? Well, we'll do it our way. Your will gets you in trouble. Y'all don't want me to preach today. Your will gets you in trouble. you got to have a spiritual covering. You have to have a man of God in your life. You need brothers and sisters. You need the laws of God. You need, to, uh, you need accountability. You, you need to stay right with the Lord. You can't do that on an island somewhere. You can't do that. It'd be different if you couldn't come. But if you can come, if you can do it, by all means, whatever it takes, get to the house of God. Get with your church family. Get with the people of God. And let's have church. Let's be the church. Let's walk this out. Let's live this out. Any other thing is a new heart. I've talked to people who've tried it and they're so miserable. So miserable. Thank God I could get back to the church. Thank God I could get back in the presence of God. Thank God I could get back to where the Holy Ghost is working and flowing. When somebody says I can get private revelation, you'll get in trouble doing that. Well, I can do this on my own. You're going to get in trouble doing that. If it wasn't for the fivefold ministry, we would all not be able to make it. It's for the perfecting of the saints. The work of the ministry. You to find a body of Christ. You can't make it. It's a new cart. And where there is no room for the church or the living God to have new carts come and mess up our theology, mess up our worship, mess up our praise, and mess up the... We don't have room for new carts. Okay, y'all. I'm going to keep preaching because it's going to have... We, well, I got to get it home, y'all. I got to get it home. It doesn't matter how much we shout, dance, and run and jump. You can do that all you want to. But if you're doing it through the system of a new cart, it's going to come up short somewhere. If it's not God's way, it's going to come up. Well, well, I mean well about it. Well, this man meant well. How did it go for him? He meant well too. Really meant well. But he died that day because it wasn't, he, he, he was doing the, he was doing what he felt like was the right thing, but it, it was contrary to the Lord's will. And somebody says, well, I'm doing all that I can do. And, and you know, but, but are, you, are you in the book? Are you living according to the word of God? I have good intentions. I, I believe in God. Isn't that good enough? Or I go to church East, Easter and Christmas. Thing. No, that's not good enough. You have got to find yourself a member in a church and pulling your part and giving your weight and being a part of the work of God. It's a bunch of new carts, especially in 2022. <laughs> if y'all still love me, somebody shout amen. amen. We, could, we, could, we could do this different. We could do it different. We could cut some corners. And I know guys just did it, and they've got their buildings packed. I think we could pack this building without cutting corners. Amen. I think we can have revival without compromising. I'm just going to tell you, if it takes new carts to have revival, I'd rather not have revival. I want to, I want to be a part of the real, true, blue, apostolic, Holy Ghost church. 
and they, there's no room for new carts and all that. It's not our thinking or our ways or what we think is best. Let's follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. Let's be God-driven. Let's be Spirit-led people. Let the power of God fall in the church. Let's do this thing God's way. Somebody shout amen. amen. We're going to come up short if we cut corners. Yes. We're going to miss something somewhere if we compromise. Amen. Well, Jesus ain't the only way. That's a new cart. There's lots of roads that lead to heaven. That's a new cart. There is only one way. Come on, Victory Tabernacle. There is only one way. It is J-E-S-U-S. There's only one plan of salvation. And it's Acts 2.38. There's only one way to God. And it's through the door. Jesus Christ is the door. A new cart won't get you there. Men's thinking, men's ideas will not get that job done for you. Somebody give him a little praise right now in the house today. I... Oh, come on, somebody. New carts get people killed. New parts will cause people to be lost. New carts will cause people to be lost. I have to give an account for what I preach. I have to give an account. I stand before the Lord one day and I have to give an account. Just like you have to give an account of yourself. As a matter of fact, I'll take it one step further. The Bible says you have to give an account. And I will have to give an account for your conduct as the people of God. Amen. The man of God will have to give an account for you. So I don't want to stand before the Lord one day and say, oh, Sister Sally, she was a pain in the neck. I want to say, Sister Sally was the best, best thing since light bread. She was the best thing ever going, God. She loved you, loved truth, loved the church. Oh, Brother Jim Bob, he was, there was nothing like Brother Jim Bob. He was the best dude in the church. He was faithful, loyal. Amen. He didn't try to cut corners. We're living in a time now that wants to cut corners. They're convenient, brother. I'm going to get to some of that. They're convenient. But we, we can't afford to choose what's convenient over what's right. We can't afford to choose what's cool over what's right. We can't afford to choose what's flashy and what's cool. What's really the new thing. Y'all, I'd rather have the old way be in God's way than a new cart full of bells and whistles and a bunch of cool stuff. Let's get back to the old paths. Let's get back to holiness and righteousness and purity and godly living somebody. Amen. Doesn't matter how well intentioned we are. Uzzah meant well, but it got him in trouble that day because he disobeyed the Lord. The ark was designed by God to be, the, be carried only one way that was upon the shoulders of the priest. There was only one way. Somebody say one way. There was only one, one, one door in the ark. There's only one way in, one way out. There's only one way to heaven. That's Jesus. He is the door. He's the way, the truth, and the life. We don't need new fancy things. Let's get back to Jesus. Let's get back to the Lord. Let's get back. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We don't need new fancy stuff. I'm going to tell you how strong Jesus put it. He said, if someone comes up another way, he is a thief and a robber. Sister Lisa, wording of it, he says he is a thief and a robber. I thought it said he, he's as a thief. It said he is a thief and a robber. You try to carry the presence of God improperly, it's a dangerous place to be. It matters how we carry the presence of God. Somebody says, God doesn't care about the temple. You, you have no scripture for that. God cares about the temple. He cares about how we conduct the temple. That's why he said, be ye holy or be ye clean, ye that bear the vessels of the Lord. God don't want it. Purity matters. Holiness matters. Righteousness matters. Godly living matters. God wants people of holiness and purity and righteousness and right living. I can just live for God any old way that I want to. Where did you get this at? 
What Bible are you reading? We'll carry the ark any old way we want to. No, you won't. No, you won't do it. We'll live this life any way we want to. We'll get good and ready. It don't happen that way, y'all. Newsflash, you ain't the boss. Newsflash, you ain't in charge. There's one that said, I want the ark carried on the shoulders of a priest and there can't be any other way. I wish somebody would stand up and say right now, there's only one way. I'm going to do my part with that. If it's on the shoulders, let's carry it on the shoulders. If there's one right way, let's stay in that one right way. Come on, somebody shout amen. I got to preach this, y'all. We don't need theatrics on the platform. We don't need a bunch of sensationalism. We don't need smoke and lights and dancers. We don't need people wearing too tight of clothes. We need a Holy Ghost people, spirit-led people, anointed people that have the power of God and they're humble and they're meek and they're mild and they are in love with Jesus Christ. This is not a rock concert. It's a Holy Ghost church. We're not trying to compete with the rock concerts. I'll tell you what, we couldn't compete with them if we wanted to. That's right, Brother Bob. That's right, Brother Bob. Why would we dumb down what we know to be like that dumb stuff out there? We can have revival without smoking, mirrors and Drive through church services. Drive through. Get a 20 minute sermonette for Christianettes. And go home worse than you got there. Oh, just save the gas. Or get out and go into church. Hallelujah. I'm telling you guys, there, there's, there's, there's an attempt of the enemy to get us to water down. And dumb down this thing. Why preach about one God? Why preach Acts 2.38? Why preach about holiness? Why preach about right living? Why? Because it's in the Bible where the devil says you'll grow your church. I'm telling you, I don't care about getting the crowd. I want to build the church of the living God. Let's keep preaching. Let's stay in the book. Let's stay with Jesus. And let's see this thing through, y'all. One more time, give him a mighty praise in the house here today. Come on. Twenty twenty two. We need to modernize and streamline and we need we need to accept the new cart. We need to just go ahead and get with the program. I don't want to get with that program. I'm not being ugly. Y'all know I'm not being ugly. But I don't want to get with that program. I want to stay with this program. I want to stay with his program. I want to stay with the church of the living God. I don't care about the new cart theology or new cart thinking or new cart living. I don't care about all the flashiness and the cool stuff. Just give us Jesus. Just give us a Holy Ghost move. Just give us old fashioned Holy Ghost revival. Woo, hallelujah. Turn the church into some kind of flashy, trendy, some kind of cool thing. I'm okay with cool. I'm okay with, with doing what we have to do. Change what we got to change. But I'm not, good, I'm not good with changing it to getting new carts involved. We can, we can work on some things here and there. But as long as I'm pastor, we're going to sing some old songs. We're going to keep preaching worship is right. Holy Ghost clap, hand clapping and anointed and aisle running and pew jumping. We still believe in all that. I, you can't do that, Pastor. Not in 2022. You watch me. We will preach Holy Ghost. We will preach revival. We will preach hand clapping. We will preach holiness. We will preach the truth. You don't like that? You want a new card is what you want. And that new card thing is going to mess you up. I said when I started, I don't have any axe to grind. I'm not mad at anybody at all. We got some things that need to get corrected. 
And the church, if the church would get back to the old paths, like we know we should. But we got to make room. We don't have to compromise to make room. Well, I'm going to go to a church that's got a pastor with skinny preacher pants. You're liable to get some others on the platform with skinny lady dresses that are tight and ugly and revealing. We don't, we don't need dancers on the platform. We don't need that. The world has that. We're not going to go that way. I don't care what you think. It doesn't matter. I have to answer the Lord for this, and I'm going to stand my ground today. We are not going the new cart route. Come on, Pastor. We're not Amen. going down that road. Amen. I know guys who went down that road. I got good friends that went down that road. And they're pastor of big churches right now. They got lots of folks on their pews. But I don't know how they can look their stuff in the mirror real good. Amen. After they compromise what their dad and granddad put in them for 30 and 40 and 50 years. All for stinking new carts. That'll get people killed. Well, I'm saying here today, if you're going to die, you're not going to die because we're not going to tell you the truth. We're going to tell you the truth. There's one way. And it, Jesus is the only way. And when the, when, the man, when the word said, put it on the shoulders of a priest, it meant what it said. That means the priests are important. That means the ministry is important. That means the laws of God are important. And you can't get around that. There is no getting around it. There's no getting around it. If we give in, y'all, if you give in one inch, you don't know what's going to happen. The devil's going to take a stinking mile. You give him an inch, he gets his foot in the door. It's Katie bar the door. It's trouble coming quick. And a church could go down that quick. And I refuse to be under my watch, Brother Billy. I refuse to let that happen. As long as we can get in this pulpit and preach truth and love the people and preach the truth with love. Come on, somebody. And keep preaching the, the word of God and staying right with the Lord. And I believe we're going to have revival. But I'm not going to compromise our position to have revival. And I'm not going to compromise our position to get people on these pews. I'd rather have three of us here. I'd rather have three Holy Ghost anointed people. Well, how are you going to pay the bills? It's not my bill, it's his bill. And God will take care of the situation. Come on, somebody. Let's get back to believing God can do it. God can take care of it. God will make a way. He'll show up. If we'll just stay with him, he will stay with us. People trying to find loopholes. 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 Does it really mean that? Does it really say that? We really got to do all that? If the Bible says it, it means it. The Bible says they went on the Red Sea on dry ground. I'm telling you they went on dry ground. Jesus died and resurrected. Well, they say he just swooned. He just kind of passed out for a little. Well, how ignorant can you get? He was dead. Deader than a mackerel. Better than a doorknob. He was dead. A lot of things that, that defy our thinking in the Bible. Well, how in the world could somebody dead for, well, he was dead four days and he got up. Jesus did it, y'all. Look, it'll help you a lot if you just kind of nail some stuff down. Jesus did it. It's what he said. It's all matters to me. I don't got to know how, Dale. I just know that he did it. He raised the dead. He cast out devils. He opened blind eyes. He unstopped deaf ears. He raised up little babies from the dead. He stopped coffins and funerals in their paths. I don't know. He just did it because he's God. And he says, I want it my way. And my church will be built my way. Let's say, come on. Sir. Let's say Jesus right here in Huntsville. Let's see it done your way. You are the way. Let's stay in the word. Let's stay in the book. Let, let's stay right with God and we will watch the Lord work and move wonderfully and mightily. 
If somebody says, I want to be part of a cool church. You are part of a cool church. I'm going to be part of a, I'm going to be a part of a modern update church. We are modern. You're not sitting on bricks or rocks. We are a modern. We had air conditioning. Somebody says, I wish we gave it to old, old time Pentecost. I don't know that you really want that. At least we got air conditioning. We got padded pews. I like padded pews, kind of. Although some of y'all get too comfortable in them. Sometimes I wish you'd go back to wood pews. You get yourself up off that pew a little more often. Come on, Brother Billy. And these people that make excuses, well, what happened in the world two years ago, I can do what I want. How ignorant. How unscriptural can you be? Y'all, newsflash. This hadn't changed. This is Teresa. It hadn't changed. What it took for grandma and grandpa, it's going to take for Mike and Catherine. Mom and dad, sister Kat, it's going to, what it took for them, it's going to take for us. Who do we think we are? How ignorant it was of David that day to, to, to jeopardize that man's life. And that man died doing what he thought was right. But it wouldn't have happened that the leadership stepped up like they should have stepped up. That man would have lived on. So if leadership don't get the ark back on its shoulders and we quit kind of trying to contrive some kind of cockeyed new thing to be cool and modern and reach people, this church will never make it. But I'm telling you, let's keep the ark up here. Let's keep the presence of God special and real. Let's forget the new cards and let's stay in love with Jesus. Let's preach and love truth. Let's stand for right and holiness and godliness and the Lord will reward us for that. Somebody praise him. I'm just about done. Come on, Brother Scott. Woo! Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Woo! Hallelujah! Somebody ought to thank a preacher one day. A preacher that didn't compromise. Somebody will thank a preacher one day. That didn't give in to the, what the world says, how to do it. Amen. Somebody will thank a preacher. I don't, we, we don't get a lot of thanks now. As a matter of fact, ministry is probably the most least respected now that it has ever been in all the time of America. Not by me, Authorities respected it. Civil governments respected it. They were called reverend yeah. by civil authorities. Right. And respected and honored and held in high esteem. What's happened to this world? What's happened? It's a new card is what it is. And it's, it's going to get people killed. And now I'm standing flat-footed today to tell you. We, we've got our crossroads here. We could go either way. Pastor Dale and I could, if we chose to, we, we could compromise. But I know, I know some of y'all wouldn't want to compromise. Some of y'all be saying, see you, sorry, no, see you later. And I'm glad you say that because you don't got to worry about us, us compromising. We have, we're nailed down, baby. We are locked in. We are loaded. We believe this till the day we die. We'll stand for it. We'll preach it. We'll live it till the day we die. I don't apologize. I'm not being ugly. But you can't. Do it man's way. It's either God's way or it's going to fail. Amen. How many of I got with me today that's going to agree we're going to do it the Lord's way around here? Amen. Come on. I need a dad. I need a dad going to say it's for me in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Come on, dad. That's for me in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. No new carts. No compromise. No being backed up, uh, no quitting, no vacillating, no giving in between. Come on, come on. I need a mother that's going to say, as for me in this house, we're going to serve the Lord. I wish Victor Tabernacle would say, as for me and this house, we are going to serve the Lord. Don't you think there's people that, don't you think there's people that look at churches like us? You say, haven't you got the new cart yet? Haven't you got the, the, the memo? Weren't you there for the email? You missed your email? 
don't take all that anymore. We don't need all that anymore. Drive by churches and would, 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 would raise their eyebrows at them because people, live women get out in dresses. Men get out with decent clothes and get in the church and people on the platform are modest and, 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 and not revealing and they're dressed properly. Somebody says what's properly. Well, the Bible says what's properly. I didn't get a lot of amens right there. Amen. 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 You got to get to a point, and this isn't, you don't, I'm not saying be ugly. You got to get to a point where you just don't care what they think. That's right. That's it right there. You don't care what they say. Right. Sister, Sister Natalie, it doesn't matter what they say. Right. And whoever they are, they're always going to say something. Right. Well, you go to church on Wednesdays? Yeah, I go to church. You go to church Sunday night? Yeah, we go to church Sunday night. You, you, you read your Bible through the week? Yeah, that's what I do. It's like, what, what, what planet did you land? What, where are you from? But you got to make up in your spirit, in your head, in your heart. That no new carts for me. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost says, dads, dads need to make, draw a line here. And that word dad comes to me. That word dad comes to me. Dad, you draw a line. You say, no new carts for this family. We are not giving in to that thinking. I'm going to say what I used to say. That is stinking thinking. That's a bunch of garbage. That's going to get people killed. But as a pastor, I'm standing here flat-footed and telling you, we, we refusing to go down that road. No matter what it costs, it just costs, Brother Justin. No matter what it costs. No matter what it costs. Because we've seen the result of new carts. Y'all still love me, right, everybody? Yeah. We've seen the result of it, y'all. We've seen the result. People die. Churches will be, will be lost. We're living in a time now where churches, by the thousands, have closed their doors. Pastors have walked away. There's more to church than live stream. It's a great tool and I love it. We, we've got people that support us. Thank God for everybody. That, but there's more to church than just doing what the world said, how we're supposed to do it. And we, we, we're going we're gonna to stay with, we're going to love everybody, preach the truth. We're going to open the doors. When it's not popular, we open the doors. When it wasn't real convenient, we open the doors. And by God's grace, we'll keep opening the doors. And we'll say, whoever wants to come in, let's come. Let's have a revival. Let's preach the truth. Let's love people. Let's win our city for Jesus Christ. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest praise of the morning right now, somebody. Come on. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to close with this if the Lord lets me. Y'all stand with us. I'm done. But I, I, need, I need to say this. Listen to me real closely. New carts can creep in very subtly. They can come in before you know it. Thinking. Making room for things that we think is going to be more modern, more cool, more sophisticated, more... I'm okay with sophistication. I'm all that. It's good. But when we replace theology and truth with what is cool and modern and trendy and going to draw people, we're in big trouble. We're in big trouble. And somebody's going to have to answer for that. You hear me? Somebody's going to have to answer for it. And if David, David would have been where he should have been, or, or whatever the occasion was, I don't know, but, but I, would, I would think that somehow that that man's life could have been spared that day. And I'm standing before you going through all that I've gone through. I know people are going to talk. They'll tell me what I'm going to hear later from it. 
but I'm not apologizing for it. I'm standing right where David, David, he may be just stood there, maybe. I don't know if David missed it. Maybe the guy just neglected what David, I don't know. But I'm standing here running the risk of people talking about me just to tell somebody and warn somebody that if we're not careful, we'll, we'll get a hold of one of those right there. And listen, there's a shaking coming. And the new cart got shook. The oxen shook it because it wasn't designed to ride on the cart. So it was just a matter of time till it got shook. And if you're not right with the Lord and right with truth, there's a shaking time coming. You better make sure and nail down. It ain't no new cart you own. You're in the Holy Ghost. You're in the church. You're here to stay. And when the shaking comes, you're going to ride out the storm, baby. Hallelujah. There is a shaking coming. Y'all know that, right? We're actually, we're living in a time of shaking right now. I had a, I had a, I heard a prophet told me years ago, he said, during all this mess, he said, you'll see who's with you now. You'll know. I heard another preacher say that this, this last deal revealed the difference between the tares and the wheat. And so for several years now, the tares have been going right along with the wheat. But we're making a declaration today by the help and grace of God. We're not going down that other road. We're staying with truth. We're staying with the church. We're staying with the holy things of God. We're going to stay with the preacher. When he preaches hard, you're going to say, come on, preacher, you ain't preaching hard yet. I like what Brother Bob says. Come on, pastor, throw the sugar bowl away. I can't preach too hard for some of y'all. But when I do, I notice a difference in the amen sometimes when I get where you live. Well, that's okay for them, but when I get where you live, the amens are not quite as popular. Woo! I think today I've been where a lot of us live. And the Holy Ghost is going to get our attention. One way or the other, we're going to nail it down. Uh, Live, die, sink, or swim. Uh, we are one God, apostolic, Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, holy living people. We believe in heaven. We believe in hell. We believe in right. We believe in wrong. We believe that you got to live right to be saved. That Jesus is the way. Acts 2.38 is the way. I wish somebody would help me right now. We believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to glory. And if, if you're in agreement with me, raise your hands and let's give the Lord thanks and praise right now in the house. Come on, somebody say it. I'm all in, God. I'm all in with all this. Come on, I'm all in today. I'm in with that preacher. I'm in with that word. I refuse to back up and compromise. I refuse to give in and cave in. I refuse to take my family down a road where the shaking comes. We won't survive the shaking. I refuse it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I still believe in old-fashioned healing. I still believe in old-fashioned worship. I was playing the bass earlier. I don't know what y'all were thinking. The Holy Ghost was moving, Brother Billy. We were singing those songs, Sister Tanya. And it's all I could do to stay on that base. I thought about dropping that thing and running the aisles. I used to do that back when I was younger. I could still do it now. But I thought about dropping that base and just taking off. But... Hallelujah. Woo! Jeremiah said after they threatened him and after they abused him, he said, I tried to quiet him down. I tried to shut up, but he said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. He said, I tried, but I just couldn't do it. I had to let it out. This thing is like fire in our bones. And we got to praise. We got to love him. We got to worship and preach. We got to do this thing, everybody. Woo! It's like fire shut up in our bones. That's what hit Sister Donna about 45 minutes ago. Like fire let off inside of her. Hallelujah. Somebody says, well, we don't got 
room for, no, you're ignorant. You're ignorant, bad ignorant. You know what, that, that's ignorance gone to seed is what that is. We got lots of room for Holy Ghost shouting. We got room for a Holy Ghost anointed testimony. Holy Ghost singing. We got, we got room for somebody besides the pastor to run the aisles every now and then. Somebody speak in tongues. Somebody let the Holy Ghost 